Доброго дня, друзі. Починаємо наш черговий брифінг. Good afternoon, friends. We begin our regular briefing on the propaganda and fakes of the aggressor state. In recent days, we have been observing a very interesting trend. In those cities that Russia takes control of, they are trying to put their occupant administration there. They are putting up red flags instead of the flags of the so-called Donetsk or Luhansk People's Republics, or Russian ones. Why are they doing this? For one purpose, to show a kind of connection of this aggressive war that Russia is waging against Ukraine with the events of World War II. To show Russia as a kind of liberator, to draw parallels in the minds of their audience as well as in the cities that they are taking under occupation control. In particular, this happened during the occupation of the village of Novotoshkivske, taken under control by the so-called Luhansk People's Republic. They hung a red flag there, thus repeating this narrative. But it is not the first time it appears in the propaganda activities of the Russian occupants. Another interesting narrative observed in recent days in the behavior of the aggressor state is stories about the alleged absence of political leadership in Kyiv. This was stated by the well-known Russian propagandists Kots from Komsomolskaya Pravda, who has previously authored many fake news reports. He is one of the mouthpieces of the so-called Wagner Gate. Now Kots reports that there seems to be no president or head of the office at Bankova Street in Kyiv. Therefore, there is no point in launching any missile strikes here. That was his statement on the day when the American guests were in Kyiv. Let's have no illusions, there's no sense in striking the Ukrainian general staff or the president's office at the Bankova. The decision-makers have been abroad since February 24th. Total lies and nonsense in order to explain its military failures in Ukraine. Russia is trying to attract people with foreign names. There are the same Russian propagandists, but who have Russian passports and cooperate with Russia today, a Russian propaganda resource. And one of these speakers was the so-called American military analyst Scott Reiter, who in a broadcast by Russian propagandists on the Sovyev channel gave his explanation of why Russia is not achieving its goals on the territory of Ukraine. It turns out that it's because Russia simply isn't fighting there. The Russians don't see a war in Ukraine like we saw against Iraqis. The Russians see it as a special military operation. If we were at war, Ukraine wouldn't be there a long time ago. They would have wiped it off the face of the earth without a trace. Of course, this explanation seems as primitive as possible to explain Putin's failures. But another thing is interesting. Who is this speaker? The Scott writer is known for denying Russian involvement in the Bucha massacre after all the evidence that was presented, including satellite images, after international National human rights organizations confirmed that Russia was involved in this. He said that they were not Russians, and it is the Ukrainians themselves who are killing Ukrainians. Scott Reiter claims that the killing of residents was the work of the Ukrainian military. By the way, the platform for the dissemination of this nonsense was provided by Komsomolskaya Pravda, with which he cooperates, who in my previous exposure stated that there was no political leadership in Kyiv. Reiter is a rather dubious person, with conviction including for sexually unacceptable behavior. He is one of the conspiracy theorists and authors of conspiracy theories, spoke with the spread of Russian propaganda, cliches and is one of the authors of Russia today. Moreover, even the Russian Wikipedia reports this. Scott Reiter creates content for Russia Today, a state-owned media company that has been repeatedly accused of sexually assaulting minors, was convicted of unlawful contact with minors during the trial in 2011, released after 2.5 years in prison. Russia is attracting such people in order to somehow justify its crimes and to spread its fakes. And this is not the first time they have done it. They are trying to fight politicians in the US Congress who are capable of spreading lies, and sometimes they succeed, although there is no trust in them in America itself. It is intended more than for the Russian audience, which needs at least some American foreign surnames in order to be convinced of the truth of their propaganda lies. Another fake that is thrown through Russian social networks, in particular through the Telegram channel Kremlin Laundress, they seem to be returning to the next anniversary of the tragedy in Odessa with the message that on May 2, 2014, in Odessa, these tragic events were related Mossad chemists, Israeli intelligence agencies. They show a man 
who, bearing white clouds, was involved in the murder of the residents of Odessa. This is another lie, and the video shows an ordinary student trying to help people affected during these events, and he has nothing to do with any Mossad. His only fault is that he speaks English. Perhaps for Russians this is something unusual, while in Ukraine it is an absolute common practice. Ukrainians speak English. Previously, they reapproached that there were also mercenaries in the protection of the Ukrainian president, because one of the guards said a word in English. This is a primitive fake, but effective for the Russian territory. I call you not to trust the propagandists, trust the Ukrainian media, the armed forces and the Ukrainian political leadership.